Great. All right. Well, thank you all for coming to our talk today on organizing and submitting high throughput computing workloads on the OS pool. Um, we'll start out with some introductory material and then we'll get into some hands on exercises that um, we are always happy to help with. If you have any questions at any point in time, um, just let us know. So starting out, just some quick introductions. Um, we are, we being Christina Shomig and I are a part of the research computing facilitation team for the OSG. Um, my name is Rachel, I'll be leading today's talk, but Christina and Shomig will be helping out in the chat and chiming in um, to help address any questions. Um, Christina, would you like to say anything, introduce yourself? Okay, show me. I think I think you got both of us. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Um, so if you ever reach out to us for um, help via email or come to office hours, you will um, be in contact with one of the people shown on this slide. So before we start, um, we welcome all questions. So please do not hesitate to ask. Um, you can unmute yourself or you can type a question into Zoom, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Please, 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 um, if you have any questions about what commands I type or things like that, just don't hesitate to stop me. The learning objectives for today, um, we're going to focus on organizing and submitting workloads composed of many jobs on the OS pool using HT Condor. Specifically, we'll discuss how to know which files to consider when organizing a high throughput computing workload submission. We'll discuss how to plan and implement an organizational structure for your workload files on the access point that you're working on. And we'll also discuss how to utilize different HT Condor submit file options to accommodate whatever your organizational structure and data movement strategies are. So starting out, um, we just like to quickly touch on, as a reminder, high throughput computing. So high throughput computing um, is the process of submitting many small independent tasks. So one of our favorite examples is baking the world's largest or longest cake. In terms of um, the high throughput computing approach to this, you wouldn't bake one single large cake using a massive oven. Instead, what you would do is you would create many small cakes, and then you would combine those cakes together in the end to make one very large output. Um, and so hopefully this analogy somewhat helps explain high throughput computing. What is not pictured in this image is how the bakers organized all of the inputs in their case ingredients and outputs, which are the individual cakes, before they were joined together. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on workloads that use many input files to produce many output files. So why do we want to think about organizing our data? By default, HT Condor writes all job files, so that being your input, output, HT Condor logs, etc., back to the same place, which means that your home directory can look like this, which is very cluttered, it's very difficult to find which files correspond to which analyses, and you can spend a lot of time just um, trying to remember how you organize things, what is input, what is output, etc. It's very time consuming and not very efficient. It also makes it really just hard to find things, um, which can really delay your analysis down. So we can improve our workflow by intentionally organizing our input and output files on the access point. So over here on the right hand side of the screen, we have a much cleaner organizational structure. We have a clearly we have clearly labeled directories. So we have an error folder, which we can assume contains our error files. We have an input directory, which we can assume contains our input files for our jobs so on and so forth. So it makes it much quicker to find the files that we need and to then move on with our analysis and draw the conclusions that we want to from our data. 
So the example that we'll be working with today is a text analysis example. I like to think of this as somewhat being a literature review example. Um, basically what we'll have is we're going to have books to, to analyze. We will then use a Python script that counts the frequency of different words in each book, and then we'll output the counts of the different words from that book. So I like to think of this, like I said, as a literature review is kind of adding some real world context to um, today's workshop. We can imagine that if we wanted to go through hundreds or thousands of papers, we could use a script like this um, that would basically help us identify which papers of interest maybe have the protein that we're looking for or a certain parameter for a machine learning process that we're looking for. So if we were normally going to run this on our own um, machines, we would type something like um, period forward slash and then the name of the executable. In our case today, that is wordcount.py. And then we would provide the argument for that executable. So one of the books that we'll be analyzing today is dracula.txt. So this is how we would, um, if we were running this executable on our local machine, this is how we would do it. As an aside, we want to also be thinking about our organizational plans for our files while, um, while setting up our analysis. So for our tutorial today, we will have our submit file as well as our executable that we just discussed. And we're going to want to assume that we want to put all of our input files, which are our books, in one folder and our output files into a different folder. However, we want to remember that there are additional files that will be produced by the job that we want to consider. So these being the htconda log, standard out, and standard error files, we will put these into two different um, folders, one for our log files and one for our error out files that are created by our job automatically. Okay, so I'm going to pause there. Does anyone have yes. any questions about that example we'll see it more in what rachel is about to show and like how to submit a job but does anyone have questions about like what the script does the inputs and the outputs any of kind of the information that's summarized on this slide and again you can unmute and ask questions or put them in the chat and we'll address them then. Great. <laughs> I assume the silence means everything's okay. Yes. But again, as Rachel said at the beginning, if you need something clarified as we go along, definitely stop us and let us know. Yes, thank you. So we're going to start out by thinking about organizing and submitting one job before we then go on to think about how we might adjust our submit file to submit many jobs simultaneously. As a quick reminder, just some shell tools for organizing files that will be helpful and we'll use some of these today. Um, MKDIR stands for make directory. This is how if you wanted to make, for example, a directory for your input files or for your log files, you could use this command. MV stands for move. So if you wanted to move files from one location to a different destination. And then lastly, um, wildcard. So we will use this asterisk wildcard today. When we type a command like ls wildcard.txt, this will list all of the files that end with the extension .txt. The htcondor submit file options that we'll also be discussing and using are transfer output remaps and initial dir. So transfer output remaps up here at the top um, is used to save output files in a specific path using a certain name. So this is a really great feature if you want to save output files to a specific folder, which is how we will use it. Additionally, you could also use it to automatically rename output files to avoid writing over existing files. We'll also discuss initial dir. Initial dir sets the submission directory for each job. 
When set, this becomes the base path where output files will be saved back to. This is a great option if you want to submit multiple jobs from different directories, or if you want to avoid um, having to write some paths in some of your submit file values. So um, just before I move on, a quick note about the transfer output remap syntax, which we'll be starting out with today. The syntax is basically the, um, you will first start and end with quotation marks. It's very important to not forget those. And then you will specify the name of the file that your executable creates, and you will set that equal to the path that you want that same that file saved to, as well as that, as well as the name you want that file saved as. So in this first um, line right here, which is actually the middle line of this box, I save file one dot out to a certain path using the same output name file one dot out. However, if I wanted to, I could rename file two dot out to be something renamed file two dot out. So just a quick note on that syntax. So we're gonna go ahead and practice. To do this, we're going to log into our OSG Connect access point. So this being login 04 or login 05. And then we're going to download our tutorial and explore the files within. So we'll do that by first of all, typing our PWD to make sure that we're all within our um, home folders. To download the tutorial, the command is tutorial space word freak. Then we will CD inside of the folder that is downloaded and we'll type LS to explore those files. And, and then eventually we will organize our input files using this MV command to move all of our book files, which end in .txt to the input folder. So that's just a quick explanation of what we're going to do. And now we're going to go ahead and do it together. So at this point in time, um, you can log in to your access point. So I logged into login 05. And we'll wait one second just for everyone to be able to do that. If you have any questions or difficulties logging in, let us know. You'll know that you've successfully logged in once you have um, the OSG Connect prompt, as well as if you type PWD, you should get an output that says home forward slash your user ID. So we'll give everyone a second to do that. Once you have done that, if you could either give a thumbs up um, in the chat or even just text in the chat that you have successfully logged in. Great, it looks like we have one person who's been able to log in, two, three, great. Give it one more second. Great, okay. So it looks like almost everyone has logged in and either given a thumbs up or responded in the chat. So we'll slowly move forward. Like Christina mentioned, if you have any questions, please um, stop us or post something in the chat and we're happy to help them. So now that we've logged in, we're in our home directory. We're going to download this tutorial by typing tutorial word freak and hitting enter. So we should get um, some output like this. So we've installed these files or um, and then we're running the setup for this. And then when we type LS, we should see a folder that has been downloaded called tutorial dash word freak. And once you have this, you can CD inside of this folder by typing CD tutorial dash word freak. And this way we'll navigate inside the directory. And if we type LS, We'll discuss this output for one second before moving on. So one thing that I note right at the top is we have Dracula.txt. So that is one of the books that we're going to be analyzing, but we also have some other books. So we have Huckleberry Finn, Pride and Prejudice, et cetera. 
Oh, and Al, oops, sorry, I missed Alice in Wonderland at the very top. <laughs> so these are the texts that we're going to be analyzing. We also see inside this folder that we have our word count submit file, our word count.py executable. We also see some folders that have already been created for us, such as our error out directory, our input directory, our log directory, and our output directory. So to start out, let's clean up our workspace and let's move our book input files into the input folder. To do this, we'll type mv space, and we want to move all files ending in .txt. So we'll use that wildcard asterisk, and then we'll, we want to move them into the input directory. When you're ready, you can go ahead and hit enter. And then I'm just going to type clear to move my prompt to the top of the screen. If I type ls, I now see that my workspace is much cleaner. And if I actually navigate inside of our input folder and type ls, I see that I've successfully moved all of my input files into this directory. I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back up one directory and type ls, just so that we can see that we're all in the same location. So now we have a clean, organized starting setup for our file structure and for our analysis. Let's go ahead and think about the changes that we will make to our submit file and actually go ahead and submit a job analyzing some of these books. Um, so, Let's think about, as we're um, about to prepare our submit file, let's think about our current um, project directory. Like I said, we have our submit file, our executable. We now have this input folder with all of our books inside of it, and as well as our other directories that we wanna store our output in automatically. After we submit our jobs, what we want each decoder to do automatically is to store our output files. In our case here, our output files are called count followed by the book name. So in this case, these are the word counts for the Dracula.txt file. But we also want each decoder to automatically store all of our logs into our log directory and all of our error, standard error and standard out files into our error out directory. So keeping this in mind, Let's start um, thinking about our submit file. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna walk through what we will be doing to our submit file, the changes that we're going to be making, and then I will edit the submit file in the terminal. So you're free to listen or, and then edit with me, or if you would like to start editing the file as we're kind of going along, that's fine too. Whatever is most helpful for you. Rachel, there's a question in the chat. Um, what does log stand for? <laughs> Log, great, yeah. thank you. Yes, so log is a file produced um, automatically by HT Condor. It contains information about your job, such as when your job was submitted, where it started running, where out on the OS pool your job actually ran. And it also contains information um, about the resources that your job used. To run. So for example, at the very bottom of the log file, you'll have a table that's automatically produced for you by HT Condor that says the amount of resources, so resources being CPU, memory, disk space, the amount, of, the amount of resources you requested in your submit file versus the amount your job actually used. So basically a log is kind of a history of your job that HT Condor is keeping track of and then you can use later on to um, track certain metrics if you were interested about some of these values or troubleshoot, et cetera. Any other questions before we go on? I'm, I'm happy that we're taking a second to pause. seem to have lost my Zoom chat. There we go. Great. <laughs> Found it. So, okay, great. If there's no other questions, we're just going to move on. So we're going to, um, like I said, discuss our submit file for one job that we want to submit, one book that we want to analyze. 
So to start out, I think it's most helpful to start out with our executable. In our, in our case today, our executable is wordcount.py. And then we want to think about the argument for that executable. In our case, we'll start out by analyzing dracula.txt. Next, we want to think about the input files that our job needs. So as a reminder, the executable for your job is transferred automatically to your job. You don't have to specify it as an input file. HDCondor knows to transfer the executable. Um, however, if there's any other files, in our case, we need that Dracula.txt to actually analyze. We need to tell HDCondor to bring this file along to our job. So many times we would say transfer input files equals Dracula.txt. However, in our case today, what we want to remember is that this file is located inside of the input directory. So we need to tell HTCondor to specifically go into the input directory and find Dracula.txt there. So we want to specify this path so that HTCondor knows where to look. We would do that by saying input forward slash Dracula.txt. Next. We're going to use our um, submit file option of transfer output remaps to have HD Condor automatically save our output count file to our output folder. And this is a quick reminder of that syntax. You always want to start and end with quotation marks. And then you would then start out by specifying the name of the output file that your executable creates. So in our case today, our executable creates a file called count.dracula.txt. And we want to set that equal to the path that we want our output file saved to and the name that we want it saved as. So in our case, we want htcondor to store our count file to the output directory, and we want it to be saved as the same file name. We don't want it renamed in this case. Then we also want to remember our log standard error and standard out files that are also automatically created. Similarly, we'll want to tell htcondor to store our log file under the log directory. And we're going to have HDCondor store this as a file called job.procID. As a reminder here, what we're doing is we're calling the process ID variable that is automatically assigned to your job. And we're having HDCondor insert that variable value here and save this file as job.processID.log. Similarly, We'll have very similar syntax for our error and out files, except we want those saved to our error out directory. And then lastly, we don't want to forget our queue statement, which ultimately tells HT Condor to start this many jobs or queue this many jobs. Any questions before I move on? Like I said, we want to queue one job to analyze our Dracula.txt, so we don't want to forget our queue statement down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and analyze one bucket. So we're going to fill out our word count.sub file together, and then we're actually going to submit um, this job before moving on to submit many jobs simultaneously. So at this point in time, I'm going to jump back to my terminal. I'm going to type clear just to move my prompt to the top of the screen type ls to um, list the contents of this file. And then I'm going to go ahead and open and edit my word count submit file. Or yes, so uh, we will do that using a text editor. I prefer to use nano. You may have a different text editor that you prefer. So type nano word count dot sub. And when we hit enter, I have, I can see my submit file. We're going to start out, like I said, filling this in. So as a reminder, our executable is called wordcount.py. Our argument for this job is that Dracula.txt file. 
The input file that we want to transfer is that Dracula text, but remember it's inside of our input directory. Next, for our transfer output remaps option, we want to remember to start with a quotation mark, setting the, um, specifying the name of the file that our executable creates, which is count.dracula.txt, and setting it equal to the path that we want this file saved to, which is our output folder, and the name that we want it saved as, which is just count Dracula dot txt and then lastly ending with that quotation mark and i can make this font a little bit smaller to help some of that show up on one screen okay um, moving on we have um should transfer files we always want that set to yes unless one of our guides specifically says otherwise when to transfer output on exit is the default. So we want output transferred when the job exits. For our log file, we're going to save that to the log directory under the name job dot and calling that process ID dot log extension. For the error file, we want it saved under the error out directory under job dot calling that proc ID by using dollar sign um, parentheses around the variable name, and using the .err extension. And similarly for our output file, we want it saved to the error out directory under job, oops, job dot proc ID dot out. We do have a requirement for this job that we just land on a certain type of machine. For your own workflow, you may have other requirements. We're also requesting one CPU, a little bit of memory, and a little bit of disk space. And then most importantly, we see down here at the bottom, we have our queue statement. So I'm going to go ahead and save this by typing Control X. I'm going to type Y to save it. You and then hit enter to write it using the same file name. Once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and submit it. We can submit it by typing condor underscore submit, followed by the name of our word count dot sub submit file. Going to go ahead and hit enter. And what we see is that we've successfully submitted one job to HT Condor. Any questions before I go on? Rachel, can you run uh, head on wordcount.sub just to yes. get the first couple lines? I think most people are keeping up, which is like, <laughs> just in case. Yes, <laughs> it's a surprising amount of text to type, so I'm happy to do this. Another command for those who have typed this and who have submitted their job that I personally love to use, um, we can always type condor underscore Q to check on our job status in the queue. What we see is my job is currently idle waiting to be matched to a slot out in the OS pool to run. Another command, which I enjoy typing and using a lot is condor underscore watch underscore Q. I personally use this a lot when I'm troubleshooting and kind of want quicker feedback um, because I'm impatient and I love a live feedback of the queue. So condor underscore watch queue, if we hit enter, provides, oh, well, so my job is most likely done, which is why I have this error here. If your job hasn't run yet, what you'll see is a live feedback from the queue that's updated every two seconds. So instead of having to type condor underscore Q over and over, you can type condor underscore watch underscore Q and you'll have a live feedback of the queue. So you'll know more or less exactly when your job matches to a slot, begins running and is done. You will get a, a warning like this if your job is done. So if I type condor Q, 
I see that I don't have any jobs in the queue anymore, meaning that it ran and has already exited the queue. I'm gonna go ahead and type clear just to move my prompt to the top of the screen. If I type LS, what I see is basically the same data structure and organizational structure that we have been working with, which is great because I didn't want HD Condor to put any files on this directory level. Instead, I asked HD Condor to put my output files into my output directory. So if I navigate into that directory by typing CD output and list the contents of it, what I see is I've successfully created count.dracula.txt and HD Condor has automatically stored this into my output directory. And just because it can be very helpful to kind of see the, the data that we're working with, if we actually type tail and then the name of count.dracula, oops.txt, this will print the last few lines in this file. And we see these are the frequencies of different words. So the is the most frequently reoccurring word in Dracula, the book, with, appearances, with appearing over more than 7,000 times, followed by and and I. So like I said, I like to think of this as being a literature review where maybe I'm looking for certain words commonly popping up in the papers that I've selected. I'm just gonna navigate back up to our main directory, type clear one more time. And then just to investigate, we'll list the contents of our air out directory. And we see that we've successfully had HD Condor store our job air and our job out files in this folder as well. Any questions? Great. And if we wanted, we could also invest our investigate our log directory. Yeah, do since there was a file? question earlier, do you want to just look yes. at it briefly? I think that's a great idea. So we can actually go ahead and investigate our log file by typing something like cat to list all of the contents of this file, followed by the file name. Whoops. I first have to navigate into the directory with this file. And then we will type cat job point zero log. So starting out at the top of this file, like I said, the log file is essentially a history of your job. So we see that we've submitted it um, at this date and this time, transferring um, started, HD Condor started transferring input files to the machine that's running our job at this date and this time, so on and so forth. In this information, there's also um, where your job ran, things like that. The thing that I find very helpful is if you scroll to the bottom, HD Condor automatically produces this table, which has the amount of each resource we requested in our submit file versus the amount you actually used in your job. So in our case, we requested 512 megabytes of memory and we actually only used three megabytes. So this is really helpful for optimizing the resource, your resource requests. There's also other information such as exit code information. If um, you feel comfortable using exit codes, these are just codes that um, provide sometimes status updates and information about uh, your executable and your job. So does anybody have any specific questions about a log file? That's just a very quick overview. Is it possible to request more memory? Yes. So let's say we didn't request enough memory, our job would go on hold. We would have an error in our error file that's automatically created by HT Condor that says, something along the lines of you exceeded the memory requested. In that case, you would go back and you would edit your submit file. So if I wanted to do that, I could, could actually investigate together if I navigate back up one directory, and just so that we're back at our main tutorial directory. We would open up our submit file. In, that case, in this case, I'm not editing it. I'm just print, print, printing the contents of it. But what we would do is we would edit this line. So we would request more 
than 512 megabytes of memory, excuse me, <laughs> if we needed more. So that log file is very helpful. Um, that table gets automatically produced every time your job completes and exits the queue. Um, so it can be very helpful for understanding your job and many aspects of your job. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to type clear to my prompt at the top. So now that we've successfully submitted one job, our files are being stored in the locations that we expect. Let's go ahead and think about submitting a full high throughput workload. In our case today, we're going to be analyzing five books using one submit file, but you could also analyze many more books uh, simultaneously. So the first thing that I like to think about when submitting many jobs using um, a single submit file is editing the queue statement down at the bottom. So we'll start here. There's multiple different ways to modify this queue statement. Here is a list of some of them. So by default, we're using QN. So QN basically just means queue, for example, one job. When we say just Q by itself, that just means Q1. There's also different syntaxes. The one that we're going to use is Q variable from list.txt, where our list, um, each line of this list file, htconda will automatically queue a job for that line. So in our case, what we'll have is we'll create a file that contains all of our books on individual lines and htconda will automatically queue a job for each book. Um, so to do this, we first need to create our list.txt file. To do that, please make sure that you're inside of our word frequency tutorial directory. And we're going to type ls to list the contents of our input directory, which has all of our input files or our books. And then we're going to save that output to a file called list.txt. Our output of this will ultimately be just a list of books. But this could also be a list of values, so parameters or other input files, so on and so forth. To do this, we'll jump back to that terminal. Like I said, we're going to type ls to list the contents of our input oops, directory. And we're going to save that to a file called list.txt. When I type ls, I now see that I've created this file. And then if I print the contents of that, we see that all of our book titles have been stored in on individual lines. Great. Okay, so now that we have our list, we're going to also go ahead and make a copy of our submit file and we're going to call it something like many word count does submit. This is just a really great practice so that you always have your original submit file to go back to which you know works so you're free to edit your new submit file and always have a working copy of a submit your original submit file um, that you can always reference later on. So we'll type CP word count dot sub and we're going to create a new file called many word count dot sub. Great. And if we type ls, we now have a copy of our submit file that we are free to edit. So let's think about our submit file changes that we're going to make. And once again, you're welcome to edit these as we're kind of going through them, or you can wait until we go through it together. So like I said, I always like to start with the queue statement at the bottom of the submit file and changing it to the syntax that I'll need for my job. So in our case, we're going to use that queue variable from list.txt syntax. In our case, we're going to say queue book from list.txt because we can rename that variable to be anything that we want. We could say queue sample from list of samples.txt, so on and so forth. And the really cool thing is that once we define this variable here, we can use this variable elsewhere in our submit file. So what we'll do is 
every time we see um, a value that we want to change in our case, every time we want to see Dracula in our submit file, we want HT Condor, instead of using Dracula, we want HT Condor to find whatever entry HT Condor is on in the list.txt file. We want HT Condor to find that book name and insert it where we see Dracula.txt. To do that, we'll use this book variable. And every time we see Dracula.txt, we'll replace it by calling that book variable. So in this case, our executable for every job will still be wordcount.py, but our argument for our first job will be dracula.txt. For our next job will be pride and prejudice, so on and so forth. And HT Condor will then transfer the corresponding book to the job, and then we'll automatically store the output file that our job creates using the correct name as well. So we're going to go ahead and make these changes to our submit file. So to do that, we'll open up our copy of our submit file in our text editor. I use nano, like I said before. So instead of starting at the top, like I said, I always like to start from the queue statement down at the bottom. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, find queue. And instead of saying just Q, I'm going to say type Q book from list.txt. Now that we've defined this book variable in our submit file, we can go back up to the top of the submit file and work our way logically down. Every time we see Dracula.txt, we want to delete it and we want to instead call that book variable by typing dollar sign, open parentheses, book close parentheses. So we see that in our arguments line. The next time that we see it is our, in our transfer input files line. So I'm going to jump down. I'm going to delete Dracula.txt and instead call my book variable. For our transfer output remaps line, same thing once again, where we see Dracula.txt we're going to call that book variable. Quit. So these are the three locations that our arguments line, our transfer input files line, and our transfer output remaps line, where we see Dracula.txt. Another place that we could use it if we wanted to, I'm not going to make this change just because I want to make sure um, that my slides match what we're walking through. But another place where I personally enjoy using this syntax is for my log error and output files. Um, so what you could do if you wanted, it's optional, um, is call the book variable here as well, such that when HT Condor stores your log file, not only would you have the proc ID, the process ID, but the, out, the output file that's created would clearly say job process ID Dracula.txt. So you know exactly which book this log file corresponds to. You know, and you could also use it for your error and out files, and you would know exactly which out files, or excuse me, standard out and standard error files correspond to which book. So that's another really great use case for this syntax. So I'm going to go ahead and exit by typing Control X, A Y to save, Enter to save it as the same name, and then what we'll do is we will submit these jobs by typing condor underscore submit with our new submit file, many word count. Oops, dot sub. When we hit enter, the one thing I wanna point out is that we've now successfully submitted five jobs using a single submit file. So you can imagine right now our list.txt file contains five books. But if you wanted to, you could add, you could make it 10 books, you could make it 50, you could make it a thousand, you could make it 
20,000. And HD Condor will automatically queue a job for each of those lines um, in that file. And like I said before, we can type that condor underscore watch underscore queue command to get live feedback of the queue. And this is the output. Um, we see down here at the bottom that this output is being updated every two-ish seconds. We have our jobs, which have now just begun running. One of them is already done. So this is just really helpful when you're um, wanting a quick turnaround and wanting to keep an eye on the queue at all times. So I actually see that all five of my jobs are done. To exit this, we see down here at the bottom, it's control C. I'm gonna type control C to exit. Clear to move my prompt to the top of the screen, LS. And what I'll do is I'll just list the contents of that output directly, oops, output directory. And what we see is that we successfully created the count files for all five of our books and that HT Condor has stored them cleanly in our output folder. Similarly, if we wanted to investigate our error out directory, we see all of our standard error and standard out files. Any questions before we go on? I, uh, I had one. Yes, please. Uh, say if you wanted to, I know like the point of the script is to count each book individually and have its own like file. What if yes. you wanted just one output file? For a total, for all of your books? Yeah. So that would not be a very high throughput approach because a high throughput approach relies on the notion that each job has its own independent input and output. And that type of process would require that basically the output of all of the jobs needs to be able to be visible to each other. So instead, what you could do is if you wanted to do an approach like this, you could submit all of the jobs as independent tasks, just like we did. And then you could run some sort of postscript to combine the results of your various count files. Does that make okay. sense? Okay, yeah, that, that does. Okay, great yeah. question. Yeah, I was just gonna build on what Rachel said is it's very common to, do one part of your workflow in this kind of high throughput way where you have lots of inputs and lots of outputs um, and then aggregate them at the end um, because often you do want like one answer. <laughs> you, yeah. you, um, you do want, and um, how you do that kind of depends on how computationally expensive it is. Sometimes people will submit like a whole, a separate like final single job that does that aggregation and they make it as part of like a two-step workflow. Often we find that that step is relatively computationally simple and people just download all the output files and then run a combination step on their computer. Okay. So there's different ways to approach that. We're assuming here, this example is not perfect because the word count is not very time consuming, but we're assuming that the part that you're doing high throughput is, you know, each job would run for like, minutes to hours and so it's advantageous to do it that way and then do a summary step um, and then so jack's question along similar lines rachel I'll let you have first first crack if i were to yes. run something like 10 to the sixth so that's a million jobs oh i'm bad at scientific notation <laughs> is it still better to write 10 to the sixth individual files and aggregate them at the end or is it better to write um, all to one place. Yeah, so this is a great question. Um, like Christina said, a lot of these things depend on how you ultimately want to structure your jobs. And this would be something that I would highly recommend if this is a use case that you are going to have, come to office hours and we can really help you strategize for your specific job. Broadly, um, I would say, well, first I would want to know is 10 of the six jobs like your best setup? Is that going to be the most optimal way to run your jobs? Let's assume that it is. What I would maybe consider doing if you if it's just a matter of aggregating the job or aggregating all of the output files in the end, I would probably do your analysis in chunks. 
Um, and I would aggregate like one chunk of a certain number of files and then aggregate another chunk of files. And you could submit that as, those as jobs so that you're aggregating chunks simultaneously. And then from those chunks, you could then aggregate all of the results into one total summation file. But I think, like I said, I would highly recommend coming to office hours because we could help you think about, for example, how large are these files? Are you going to have a million small files, a million medium sized files? We can just kind of help you think about the best way to do this. Yeah, and I'll add that I think what Rachel has said is spot on, especially in terms of the chunking. Um, it, I think we would ask just, you know, if you're running a million jobs where they're each like 15 seconds, and they produce one input and output file, we would say you should group those together um, so that you have slightly longer jobs to make the kind of scheduling overhead worth it. And then you wouldn't have as many files. But if you really did have a million hour long jobs and you wanted to produce a million files from our perspective, that's fine. But we would want to talk about how to exactly kind of what this <laughs> training is about, like how to organize how do you avoid having a directory with like a million output files in it? And how would you subdivide things just so it's more manageable for you? So yeah, great question. Um, I think Shomik is answering yes. Krishna's questions about Condor Q. Mm -hmm. Just to address um, Krishna's question out loud, Condor Q. So if I was to type Condor Q right now, I see that I have no jobs in the queue. So once your job runs and completes, it exits the queue. Um, at this point in time, like Shkomix mentioned, because your job has exited the queue, you could actually type a different command, a different version of Condor queue, which is out of the scope of this workshop, but we do have lots of resources on it. It's called Condor history, just to provide a brief, brief snapshot of what it is, and you can follow this with a job ID or your username um, or a batch ID. So if I was to look at the history, the Condor history of my jobs, these are, and I just stop this because otherwise it'll keep printing. So you can stop it by typing control C. This imprint or this outputs the history of various jobs that you've run um, when you submitted them, their runtime, et cetera. So basically once your job leaves the queue, you can then find it using Condor history, but eventually that is cleaned out as well. Just gonna type clear. So um, if you're more interested in that, stick around and we can point out some great resources um, for learning more about Condor history. So we have our new project directory. Now that we've submitted five jobs using a single submit file, we have a very organized work set up. This is much better than what we started out talking about where all of our files are printed to the homes or saved back to home and just a cluttered workspace. Um, we can imagine that you can efficiently keep track of many files and the output of many jobs using transfer output remaps. Another organizational model that you may be more helpful um, for your analysis would be initial dir. So like I said earlier, initial dir sets the submission directory for each job. When you set this, this becomes the base path where output files will be saved to. So this is really helpful if you want to submit jobs from different directories. Maybe your workflow is such, set up such that um, you have lots of directories and that's the organizational structure that makes sense for your workflow. Initial dir could be a great option to consider. It's also uh, used to avoid having to write some paths in other submit file values. So an example of this, um, we can imagine we have our submission directory, we have our um, submit file with our executable, maybe we have a shared file amongst our jobs, but then we have a folder where our input for that job, our output for that job, and we want all the other job related files to be saved back to. For this setup, what we would do is we could set initial dirt equal to that um, directory name. But then the important thing that we wanna consider is other paths in your submit file that become relative to this directory. So you'll notice that for our transfer input files line, we can just say input.txt because that is inside of our results folder. 
However, the shared var variables file is now up a directory. So we need to tell HT Condor to look up a directory to find that file to then take it to our job. So this is one way to use initial dir. Another way to use initial dir is to separate jobs by directory. So here, what we have is um, a workflow where, for example, job zero and all of the files related to job zero are found in this, this folder. Um, and we want the output related to job zero to be stored back to this specific directory and so on and so forth. And maybe we have, in this case, we have three different directories. Maybe we have 20 or more directories. You could use this as an option. So here we could set initial dir equal to something like job and then calling a process ID or calling a variable that we define in our job, or excuse me, in our submit file. The one thing to note is that when using initial dir, the executable should be in the directory with the submit file, not the individual job directories. So we see over here, our executable is not within our job directories, it's outside of it. So when thinking about your own workflows, there's some helpful questions to begin considering. So the first one are how big are your input and output sets of data? For example, do you need to take into consideration, do you need some data to be stored in home? Do you need some to be available in public? And you wanna take that into consideration when thinking about how to structure your submit file and executable. You'll also want to think about what organizational strategy makes sense for the next steps in your analysis. Um, so, for example, do you want all of your inputs in one folder and your outputs in another folder? In that case, it'd be a great option to use transfer output remaps. On the other hand, do you have many output files for each job that you want to group together, but maybe keep separate from other jobs? Or do you have input and outputs for the same job that you want to keep together? In those cases, you might want to use initial dir. And then lastly, how do you want to organize those HT Condor slash system files? So those being the HT Condor log, standard error, and standard out files. Um, it's very helpful to keep track of those, to have a great organizational strategy for those because if your job encounters an error, it makes it very easy to go to, for example, the standard error file for that job, see what happened with the job and quickly correct whatever that error is. So these are just some starting questions um, to kind of get you going. And then if you ever would like to discuss this with a facilitator or have any questions about it, please come to office hours or shoot us an email. We're always happy to help them. So does anybody have any questions about any of the items that we discussed today?